Imagine stepping back in time to a world before the convenience of cash, before digital transactions, before even the concept of a bank account. A world of pure, unadulterated bartering. A system where goods and services were exchanged directly without any intermediary. Picture this. You're a farmer, blessed with a bountiful harvest of potatoes, ready to trade your goods. But the shoemaker, the one whose craftsmanship you admire, isn't craving a potato feast. He needs a roof over his head, not spuds. This is what economists call the double coincidence of wants, a tricky situation where both parties must simultaneously want what the other possesses. Barter, as you can imagine, is a slow, cumbersome, and often frustrating process. It requires a perfect alignment of needs and desires. As societies grew and became more complex, this system simply couldn't keep up. Civilization needed a more efficient solution, something better to facilitate trade and growth. Enter money, the hero of our story. Money emerged as a universal stand-in for value, a medium of exchange that everyone could trust and accept. It simplified transactions and greased the wheels of commerce, it's durable able to withstand the test of time, it's portable easy to carry and transport, and crucially it stores value over time, allowing you to save and accumulate wealth. Unlike your potatoes which will inevitably rot into nothing, money retains its worth. Money therefore lets people specialize in what they do best. Farmers can focus on farming, shoemakers can dedicate themselves to crafting shoes, and astronomers can freely gaze at the stars, expanding our understanding of the universe. Trade becomes seamless and efficient, society evolves into a complex web of interconnected individuals, and thriving economies are born, fostering innovation and progress. Throughout history we've experimented with a wide array of items as money, We've used salt, shells, precious metals and in the modern era, even digital data in the form of cryptocurrency. Each step in this evolution reflects what we, as a society, value and how much trust we place in the system. Ultimately, the story of money is a testament to the power of human cooperation and our ability to create systems that benefit us all. And it all began with a simple yet profound shared idea. The concept of a universally accepted medium of exchange. That's why, out of necessity and ingenuity, we invented money. Bartering, while a foundational step in economic exchange, had its limitations. To solve barter's limits, early societies needed something more efficient. And so, early cultures turned to the world around them, seeking items that held inherent value and were widely accepted. They looked for things that were durable, portable, and easily recognizable. Among the earliest and most fascinating examples, cowrie shells became one of the first international currencies. These tiny treasures were light, beautiful and remarkably hard to fake, making them an ideal medium of exchange. Their unique shape and natural iridescence made them difficult to replicate. They connected distant communities, facilitating trade across vast, geographical areas. Cowrie shells traveled along ancient trade routes, linking cultures and economies. Each shell became a symbol of trust, a tangible representation of value in a transaction. Holding a cowrie shell meant holding a piece of a shared understanding. Other cultures in their ingenuity used what mattered to them, what was readily available and culturally significant. Wampum beads, carefully crafted and imbued with cultural meaning. Salt, a necessity for life and preservation. Even cattle, a measure of wealth and sustenance. Salt was so valuable, so essential to survival. Roman soldiers were paid in it. Hence, salary, derived from the Latin word salarium, meaning salt money. This commodity money was undoubtedly a leap forward, a significant evolution in how societies exchange goods and services. But it had inherent problems. It was often bulky, difficult to divide into smaller units for transactions. And its value could swing wildly, subject to the whims of supply and demand, and environmental factors. Imagine the logistical nightmare of buying a house with cattle. Or trying to make change from half a cow, a rather impractical scenario. A storm, for instance, could flood the market with shells, drastically increasing the supply. This sudden influx would cause instant inflation, devaluing the shells and disrupting the economy. Humanity needed something more stable, more easily divisible, and more convenient to transport and store. The stage was set for a new era, a shift in the very foundation of economic exchange. The age of metal was dawning. Commodity money in its various forms brought us closer fostering trade and interaction between different groups. But the introduction of coins, standardized and easily portable, would change everything, ushering in a new chapter in the history of currency.
Enter gold, silver, and copper, rare, durable, and easy to shape. At first people traded metal by weight, but purity was a problem. The solution? Coins stamped with a seal, guaranteeing value. Lydia, in ancient Turkey, led the way. Soon coins spread across empires. Now trust shifted from the metal itself to the authority behind the stamp. Coins fueled trade, built empires, and spread rulers' images far and wide. They were portable, divisible, and stable, perfect for commerce. For centuries, coins ruled the world's economies. But carrying lots of metal was risky and heavy. As trade grew, merchants needed something lighter. The next leap would make money even more abstract and portable. Imagine hauling chests of coins across the Silk Road. Think about the sheer weight, the logistical challenges, and the constant threat of theft. It was a dangerous and exhausting endeavor, fraught with peril at every turn. Bandits, harsh weather, and treacherous terrain made each journey a gamble. The Chinese Tang Dynasty, recognizing these difficulties, ingeniously solved this problem with the introduction of paper money. This wasn't just any piece of paper. It was a carefully crafted promissory note officially backed by substantial deposits of precious metals. Paper was significantly lighter, far easier to carry in large quantities, and it revolutionized trade, making large-scale commerce truly possible. Its inherent value didn't come from the paper itself, but from trust, a solemn promise that it could be reliably redeemed for tangible gold or silver held securely in reserve. Centuries later, Europe eventually adopted the concept of banknotes, seeing its potential to streamline economies. These notes were initially issued by private banks, and later their production and distribution were taken over by governments to ensure stability and control. However over time the direct link between paper money and gold, a cornerstone of financial systems for centuries, was gradually severed. It transitioned to what we now call fiat money, currency that is valuable not because it represents a physical commodity, but because governments declare it so, and crucially, because we all collectively agree to accept it as such. Today the dollar in your wallet represents a claim on a vast array of goods and services available in the economy, rather than a direct claim on a specific quantity of gold. Our entire financial system, from everyday transactions to complex international trade, fundamentally runs on a foundation of collective trust in the stability of governments and the health of our economies. In many ways, money has evolved into an almost pure abstraction, existing primarily as digital entries and fleeting data streams. At its core, it's still just a promise, a shared belief, a collective agreement that we all believe in and uphold. In the 20th century, money shed its physical form. Telegraphs, then computers turned money into data, bits and bytes in digital ledgers. Today, most money is just numbers in a bank's database. Paychecks, credit cards, online shopping, it's all information moving at light speed. Digital money made commerce global and instant. Banks became the new gatekeepers, processing transactions and holding our trust. But this system is centralized, access depends on institutions. The concentration of power and data raises new questions. Is there a way to move value without middlemen? The search for the next step in money's evolution had begun. Enter cryptocurrency, the latest chapter in money's story. In 2009, Satoshi Nakamoto introduced Bitcoin Digital, Decentralized and Trustless. Blockchain technology creates a public, tamper-resistant ledger shared worldwide. Trust comes from math and transparency, not banks or governments. Cryptocurrencies are native digital money, self-contained, peer-to-peer, and borderless. They offer new possibilities for the unbanked and for global transfers. But the crypto world is young, volatile, and uncertain. Is it the future or a fad? Time will tell. Money has evolved from shells to coins to paper to data to cryptography. The story isn't over. The next chapter is still being written. The evolution of money continues.